Capturing new leads is dating, not marriage. This is about putting on lipstick and high heels, not about binging Netflix and eating potato chips on the couch. If you wanna learn how to nurture new leads through well-written copy sequences, I can help. Subscribe to my channel and make sure you get alerted every Sunday night when I drop new videos about how to write copy like this. I'm Joy Yule from Hire a Writer. I help brands like yours write better websites, write better blogs, write better emails, and write better ads. Copy is about building great online relationships with customers who will buy from you for a long time. Let's make some money. Sometimes digital marketing efforts have reduced leads to data points. You have this idea that every lead is this little dot in your data system that you can analyze and scrutinize and get to some kind of conversion number that supposedly marks success. I would contend that you need to reorient your thinking. Every lead is a human being who has the potential to have a relationship with your brand for a very long time. No matter what your client life cycle is, no matter what your client acquisition costs, people matter. And even in digital marketing, people are the heart of the matter. Nurturing leads is an essential strategy to success. First, a word about the flywheel. Okay, we all know HubSpot changed the whole world when they decided to change the funnel from the flywheel. So if you don't know, <laughs> historically, leads have been lead generation and conversion has been categorized in what we call a sales funnel, where you take people through kind of a progression from being the widest, least interested to conversion. And that's the way that we looked at it. And as leads funneled through, your sales and marketing efforts were the mechanism through which they funneled. Marketers came out with the idea instead that a flywheel is a more effective way to think about this. A flywheel is essentially a circle. The customer is at the center of it. All your sales and marketing efforts circle around the orbit of your customer. This customer centricity is valuable and it isn't just a strategy. It's an important ethos and value system that will drive sales in your company. Flywheels activate effective marketing because they fly in the face of the idea that more is better, right? So some people think more leads is better. I'd rather have 10,000 followers on Instagram than I would have 10, right? But Engagement matters, right? It matters that people are engaged with your brand, and most importantly, it matters that people buy from your brand. So you know the metrics of your specific business. You know how much a customer is worth in your company, and you know that nurturing a lead along the way and individualizing your approach to this, no matter how big you get, is the only way to really future-proof your business. So let's get to it. Let's talk about the kind of lead nurturing copy sequences that it thoughtfully invite people into a journey with your brand. Number one is DMs. Direct messages are gold because they always get seen. If you are looking at your social media platforms, Instagram, and realizing that you have very low engagement and wondering why, it's because you're not leveraging the tools in the system and DMs are a powerful tool. Sequencing out lead nurturing DMs has to be strategically done so that it's not salesy or obnoxious. Here's how you do it. First, a DM should be a series of three messages tops. If these don't get replied to, stop. Don't keep barraging people with information if it's clear that they have no interest. However, if people do have interest, even to the point of liking a DM you've sent, then you have an opportunity to continue to talk to them. So these need to be 100% personalized. If you copy and paste, then you need to at least be changing the name. You've got to at least be changing something about it so that it feels like a personal message, not something that's a robo-reply from a giant brand. First DM you should send is a welcome, thanks, and compliment. No ask, don't ask for anything. Welcome them, thank them for following, and compliment something about their page. Make it clear that you have taken the time to look at their profile. I get that this is time consuming. This is why big brands have multiple people on staff to manage social media. It's a lot of work. But if you want customers to actually engage with your brand for the long term, to be loyal to you, you gotta put in the time. So the first one, welcome, thank you, compliment. Number two is a conversation starter or ask a question. You are still not asking for anything. If I get messages from people on my DMs, which I do all the time, who are asking for a favor, asking me to do something for them, even asking for a review of something they have, I'm turned off because I don't know you. I don't have any reason to respond positively to you. Customers are just the same. Prospects and leads are just the same. 
as you are nurturing them along this process, don't ask too early. So your second DM should simply be a conversation starter or a question. Number three is still not an ask, it's an offer. Offer something, offer a discount, offer a free download, offer a link to something, begin to engage that customer and ask, you are technically asking them to do something, right? You're typically gonna be asking them to trade their email address for a free download or something like that. Frame it in an offer, not an ask. That's gonna be your third DM. This is a great lead nurturing sequence. You should use it. The second big category of lead nurturing sequences that your brand can deploy is in text messages. Any good CRM system that you're using now, you have Keep by Infusionsoft, Constant Contact, MailChimp, any of these, any good CRM system is gonna have text messaging capabilities. Text messaging has the same value as DMs in the sense that they get seen, okay? Statistics are 98% of texts get seen within three minutes. This means that no matter what you send, people are seeing it. So make sure that what they are seeing is not obnoxious, annoying, begging, anything like that thoughtfully craft these lead nurturing sequences with the goal of getting somebody's heart on board with your brand. You'll find a recurring theme here in my lead nurturing sequence in that three is the magic number. You typically are gonna annoy people if you go over that, although we'll talk about emails in a minute. So with texts, same deal as DMs, I think there are three things you should send. I think the first one is thank you. No ask. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for buying. Don't ask for a review, don't ask for any kind of feedback, don't ask for anything, right? It's not gonna get answered anyway, for the most part. If you wanna do a review kind of oriented text blast, fine, do that separately. In the lead nurturing sequence, you want the first thing to simply be friendly, warm, welcome, thank you, short and sweet and to the point. Text two, I wanted you to know about. This could be a price cut, this could be a free offer, this could be a free download. You are offering information. So yes, technically you are asking them to do something, but you're doing it in a really soft way, okay? So you don't wanna go barrels blazing and be like, buy this now, get in here, click this, right? So this isn't the time for your real forceful CTAs because text messaging feels personal. Often when I get a text message from a company, I'm like, how'd they get my number? right? Forgetting as a professional marketer that obviously they have my number. So people feel personal when you text them and you want to make sure that you don't come on too strong. So you've already said thanks. You've kind of introduced something, a concept, established themselves yourself in their text message thread. The second message you get or that you send needs to be an offer of some kind. The third text is your ask. The third text is kind of a last ditch. If they haven't responded to either of the other ones, this is your opportunity to really ask for something, to say, hey, I'd love for you to do this. You have the opportunity to do this in a way that drives scarcity or exclusivity, which is powerful, right? To say, we only have so many of these left, we have so many slots in the course, we have so many opportunities, things like that. So craft the message carefully, keep it very short. And then the other value, the bonus feature kind of, of text messages is that you can have people share them. So you can say, um, you know, share this text with a friend so they can also get the opportunity or we're giving you the opportunity to have one referral or to include a bonus, buy one, get one with a friend if you share, that kind of thing. So you can use some of that to expand your digital footprint in that way if you do it carefully and not in a way that seems kind of gross or um, exploitive, right? So text messages have a huge potential and if you use them correctly, they can nurture leads into conversion. So how are we doing? How do you feel? Do you, you employ lead nurturing sequences in your marketing efforts? Do you have auto replies? Do you personalize them? Are your DMs, your text messages strong? Are you following any of these standards or standards at all? Or are you just trying everything? Do you know what works? Let's talk. Drop me a comment. Feel free to reach out and let me know how you're doing and if you have any questions about this so far. The last category we're gonna talk about is email lead nurturing sequences. Email drip campaigns are gonna be your bread and butter. They're a huge part of how to leverage an email list and how to get information out to new sources. There are some major pitfalls that people fall into that make them think that email doesn't work. But I will tell you, email does work. Email does convert new leads. It is a huge way to get people further down your sales funnel, but we're not using a sales funnel. Okay, whatever. It's a way to get people engaged with your brand. So this powerful tool 
you do three to five emails, right? So we're departing a little bit from our you know, golden number. You can do about three to five in a drip campaign. These are typically sequenced out, they're separated by a few days each, and they have kind of progressive calls to action and information. There are some really important things that you need to know about how to optimize these so that people actually open them and actually follow what you say to do. Four things with emails. Be conversational, okay? One of the major issues a brand falls into is getting too formal. If you segment out your audience messaging, you should be able to really appeal to where somebody's at in your sales process. This is an important thing to do because otherwise it feels like a robo message. It feels templated, it feels cold, it feels impersonal, which is the opposite of lead nurturing, right? You're still dating, you wanna woo them, you wanna show them who you are, you wanna dress up a little bit, right? So use your emails in a really conversational way. Number two is be personal. Every good CRM system has like this crazy litany of custom code that you can stick into your email templates, right? Make sure that you're using people's names. Make sure that you're using your name. Instead of just having the team at, consider having a salesperson assigned, right? So it sounds like it's coming from a human. Think of ways that you can add personal touches throughout the whole body of the email, not just at the beginning, to make somebody feel like this is really meant for them. Number three is be creative. As digital marketers, it's really easy to get caught in this idea that there's these silos. Here's copywriting, here's video, here's podcasts, and we think ne'er the two shall meet, right? We'll promote them, you know, cross promote them, but they're not really collected anywhere. Email is the perfect place to curate and collect your rock star content. So you can use all kinds of information. You can use snippets, you can use, uh, you know, sound clips. You can use all kinds of things in the body of an email that will make it more interesting. Not everybody wants to read big blocks of text. Break it up so that it's creative and interesting and engaging. And then number four with your great lead nurturing emails is be precise. Don't clutter your emails with 12 different CTAs. Don't even clutter them with two different CTAs. You want people to do one thing. And you know why? Because that one thing is trackable. You cannot get too much data from an email campaign. If you do, it will really dilute the insight that you actually extract from it, knowing what works and what doesn't. One CTA per email, that's the goal. And then in the midst of this discussion about lead nurturing content, I have to give an honorable mention to chatbots. Even though they're not my thing, I have a lot of colleagues who very strongly disagree with me and think chatbots can have incredible potential, and they can. Chatbots can answer questions. Chatbots can lead people through a dialogue and a conversation. And some people, I mean, I'm gonna, some people don't know that chatbots aren't people, okay? So some people really think they're talking with a customer service representative. So you get points for that. So there are plenty of ways a chatbot can be optimized, but you have to write that copy really, really well. So it sounds like a human being and it has all the right, you know, responses and directions that people can go to get good information. So these are some powerful ways to nurture leads in your system. I am so excited that you are on this journey. I think you're on the right track. I think that these are the skills that you need to work on to improve your digital presence and to close more sales. So subscribe to my channel. I'm here to continually teach you the best practices for copywriting. Go to my blog and go ahead and watch this video on how to create great CTAs.